Hello, my name is Viktor Kjarkonsson and uh, I'm going to go through several systems. Uh, the first will be the Node.js web server and then the NoSQL database MongoDB. The web server Heroku, uh, the uh, Apple development tool Xcode, develop apps for uh, iPhone, iPad, etc. And the Express.js, which is a package for Node.js to make it easier to do websites. The problem we are facing is that we need to make a solution for the green card lottery. Uh, with the solution will uh, list out in the app and website the name of 100,000 people who were drawn out of the million participants in the green card lottery. And uh, the solution of ours needs to be able to handle requests at uh, New Year's Eve at midnight, which will be the time when a lot of traffic is on the on the mobile network and uh, everybody is is using the phone. And uh, we need to present the list in an iPhone app and on a website. We have one day to solve this problem. And the budget is only $100 and six pack of beer if we manage to deliver in, in one day. We have no, no web server and only one MacBook. Then after we are finished we need to explain the solution to the board of directors in, in a manner that they will understand. And our solution will be to use Node.js as the web server to use MongoDB as the database, use Heroku as the web server platform, and Xcode to develop the app, and Express to develop the website. So this will be the five systems we will go through. First, just to uh, back up uh, the decision to use Node.js and explain a little bit about why. In standard web servers, when we get a request from the web server to a standard web server, some Apache or IIS or other type of web servers. Uh, the web server needs to allocate some resources to be able to handle the threat, handle the request. And it is usually about 3 to 10 megabyte, but it's depending on which type of web server we're using and which type of solution. Which, if it is a PHP uh, uh, application that we are running it takes a little bit more and uh, so it's uh, dependent on which type of app and which type of server. The thread runs and uh, then gives the solution and the solution is presented back to uh, the one who requested it. So when we need to handle 100,000 requests at the same time or, or uh, theoretically at the same time we need to allocate a lot of resources to be able to handle this. Usually how this is done in standard servers today, they have a pool of threads. They can handle maybe 100 or 1000 threads at a time and then the other re requests wait until the 1000 requests are finished and then it, the server is able to take the next pool of 1000 requests, etc. But uh, it takes a lot of resources to be able to handle that amount of requests or long waiting time. So that's why we want to use Node.js because it is it works in a different manner because it's asynchronous solution. So when we get a request from the web, the, the Node.js spawns the the request into a function, and when the function has done its uh, job it returns the answer but it doesn't stop the server so the server is ready to accept a new request uh, without being uh, having finished the function for the first request so it's an asynchronous server and then the solution when the solution comes from the first request it sends the a response back and is able all the time it's able to take um, to handle requests that means that if we uh, send 100,000 requests at the same time to Node, it will spawn in uh, 100,000 functions and and return the result in a very short 
period of time. So we don't need that the huge pool of, uh, of uh, resources to be able to handle our 100,000 requests, which is good. The basics uh, behind Node, it uses the Google V8 JavaScript engine, which is uh, a very powerful uh, JavaScript engine that Google has made. And uh, it implements the common uh, JavaScript standard, so it uh, runs uh, the same uh, on uh, different uh, platforms. JavaScript is a very known programming language. Many hate and many love, but uh, most of people are familiar with that type. With that, uh, with that language, and the same language is used on the client and on the server. Many are have known uh, JavaScript as a client uh, web uh, solution, and now we have the server side written in JavaScript also. So now we will just go uh, and take a look at Node. To install Node, we go to the nodejs.org website which is the Node's official website and here you can find a lot of uh, documentation and uh, the author explains Node here in a good video and uh, we will click the install button so it will find the correct installation file for us and we will save that and uh, when it is downloaded, we can just double click on it and uh, install Node on our Mac. It writes the files to correct places and uh, here you can see that the, the Node was installed at user local bin. And the npm, which is the Node package manager, it was installed in the bin, also in the local bin uh, folder. So uh, now we have uh, installed node and the package manager that comes with it. It's installed at the same time. Take up one terminal window. We can uh, right now node version and we will see that the node running on our Mac is version 10.0.10.1 the newest version and uh, we are ready to uh, start developing our node web server first we will uh, create the directory green card uh, we will go into that uh, directory and there is nothing there now and uh, we will start with uh, making our first node server app so uh, to begin with we will uh, need from node uh, the uh, http uh, package so to uh, be able to handle uh, web requests and the way node does this is uh, that we will define a variable called http and uh, with this keyword here required means that the uh, node goes out and find this package http in its uh, current directory location where the packages lie and uh, grab grab that package and stores it in this variable here uh, the next lines of code we need to uh, create uh, the web server so we will use this uh, code here create server and here we see the function that I was talking about before. Um, the server uh, takes a function and this function handles the request and this is the response. So each time a new web request comes into the server, it uh, runs this function with the request and uh, when the function has run it uh, will uh, give the result in the response object here and so the only thing this web server does is it writes out to the header part of the response uh, 200 it means that uh, it's a standard http uh, result of, of uh, okay 
So uh, it will write the header with the result 200 and the content type will be of the type text plane and this can be JSON or whatever we want to respond to in the browser. And then it uh, writes out the text uh, hello world and ends. And then the, this uh, our web server has done is business and uh, returned the result and so uh, with only uh, five lines of code we are able to set up a web server that handles a simple request listens on port 3100 and uh, then we can uh, log out we want to the console that uh, this web server is running on the local host and accepting requests on port 3100 so if we will uh, save this, we will save it uh, with the name app.js, which is the standard uh, uh, name of the of the main main app that we are running, and we will save this to the directory uh, the directory green card that I have made here. And uh, now we it has the extension JS, so it's standard for JavaScript. So the, the BB edit editor uh, knows the reserved words, etc., and highlights that in the correct color. Now, if we look at the, our directory, we have now this app.js uh, file lying in our directory. And uh, to be able to uh, run it, we, we say node and app.js. And uh, what happens is that the node starts up with this application file app.js and waits for requests on port 3100. And if we uh, copy this uh, path and go to our browser and uh, write in this, we can see that we get hello world here, which is exactly what we expected. And if we look at the console, we see that the, it just sits there and waits for the next request. And to be able to uh, edit our program and run it again, we have to uh, hit Ctrl C and that breaks out of uh, this app. So if, for example, we want to log out each time we get um, Request okay, then we can uh, just say console log uh, and uh, say here request and um, new line. Actually, we don't need that because the console log does it already for us. And now we save this file and run it again, and uh, then we refresh our browser, and uh, we will see that the uh, the console log sends out the request here to our console. So if we refresh this many times, we see that our app prints out this request. And uh, now we are ready to uh, do some further work with our app.